Okay. All right, this is the Capital Improvements Advisory Committee public meeting for Wednesday, February 9th, 2022. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, do we have any public comments tonight? No, I have not received any. Okay, we can move on to the next item, which would be approval of the minutes from the February 2nd meeting. Um, anybody have any comments on the minutes? No, they were they were they were very well written, and uh, and I thank whoever did that, and uh, I make a motion to approve. Second. Okay. okay, we can approve the minutes, and then I guess we can move on to the meat of the meeting tonight. Then uh, we've kind of got a preliminary list with everybody's input into the rankings so we can just um go through the list if anybody's got a reason or comment they want to <clears throat> state on any one of the line items um uh, we can do that and if we need to change anything we can but if everybody's comfortable once we go through it with the way things are um we can go ahead and leave it the way it is but well, was bonnie going to give us some guidance on this uh, in, my in what, oh, go ahead, Bonnie. I'm sorry. Oh no, I was just going to say, in what respect, Joel? I mean, um, there's two items that are on the bottom of the list. I wish were a lot higher, but um, other than that, I think I agree with Tom in that if you could just prioritize the projects, that's going to help the council a lot. Don't even worry about the money at this point which is a nice thing to have to do. But um, if, if you can just prioritize all these projects, they'll go straight over to the council. They'll, they can figure it out. I mean, Tom, I don't know if you have anything else you want to say on that. Yeah. Um, in years past, the, the uh, capital improvements would present to the council uh, a shorter list, a $900,000 list. And the way I'm looking at the, you know, preliminary uh, order, if I were to just go down that list and, and add up, you know, the amount requested, taking out the, the uh, HVAC stuff that's going to, can only be paid for by, our, you know, or we can only use those funds for air quality issues, you take that out. And the way it stands right now, I get down to the uh, fire, depart fire department air packs and I'm at 900 and something thousand dollars. Well, Tom, I understand they're still going out for bid or quotes on the, uh, you know, the fire departments. So I don't know if they have, uh, since the last time we talked, whether they have uh, any competitive quotes that they can share with us. No, um, I think what it was is they were trying other equipment. I don't think they've gone out to bid. They were trying out other towns um, equipment to see if something worked better for them and maybe was a, a cheaper price. But I can text Richie right now, but uh, I don't think they've gone out to bid at all. And Tom, if I can just clarify one thing, um, when the final rule came out for the ARPA funds, they loosened it up so that um, there isn't now a COVID versus non-COVID funds. You can actually use it for whatever you want. All of it. It's not yeah, they, they finally, uh, I think, got bombarded by the town saying you're hampering us. Okay, well, I didn't that. And no, the, sorry. Uh, that yeah, that was a part of the final rule that just came out. That was on page forty-four that you sent me, and I only got to thirty-five. <laughs> My printer ran out of ink. <laughs> yeah, um, so <laughs> fine. <laughs> so, you know, going looking at Derek's list, I what I was doing was taking the items that were in black, uh, black and red, pick, leaving out the blue ones. And then I got, like I say, I got down to the fire department. So if, if, you know, 
if we want to present at the town council meeting a certain number, we could do it that way. But the the list, the entire list in priority is very helpful to the council. I just don't know if there's a like a, a statutory requirement for the committee to present a certain dollar amount of items to council. I don't think so. That's the way it's been done in the past. That's all I, you know. Yeah, I think it's just a habit that's happened. That's all. I think it's just because that's all there was to spend, whereas this time right. it's kind of like winning the lotto. <laughs> Well, are there are there projects on there that, that that we could recommend half funding, okay? That don't have to be funded completely. Uh, you know, be half funded. I, I think Derek, uh, you know, you mentioned that I believe in your email, did you, Derek? Yeah, I mean, I was saying historically, sometimes they're fully funded, sometimes they're partially funded. I was just pointing it out to the group in case there were any projects that you felt could do that and that would ex just extend funding down the list further um you know some of them that's probably not the best thing to do because we want to get them done uh, but you know that's i was just pointing it out to everyone if you wanted to make that a consideration but but we don't have you know the cost of the projects exceeds the money that we're getting so wouldn't wouldn't it make it easier for the council if we took some of those projects and said well you know perhaps we can a partial fund this one here and and, uh, and and get closer to the figure, the dollar figure that the federal government's going to be sending us, and uh, like I said, just to make it easier for the council. But uh, uh, and you know, I don't know. And frankly, I don't know which specific projects I would have fund, and I don't know are, are any of us in a position to to make a decision like that. I'm new to this council, uh, this board. Try to do in the past is remove things from the list as we can. Um, we've got a new, unique opportunity this year where I think a lot of the projects that have been on the list for a while could be removed um, either by ranking them higher or it's going to be the council decision how they want to handle things. But some of these things, I mean, some of these CIP projects that have been on the list for quite a while and we've been funding them along might be a good time to get them off the list. Um, whereas some other things like the Solomon Wells parking lot, although it'd be nice to be able to get it done, it's usable, it's functional, it's a bit of a pain on the neck for the maintenance department every year to clean it up, respread it and everything. But for $270,000, I think it's money that could be spent somewhere else better. It's that kind of thing I think we need to look at, maybe getting some of these things off the list that have been on here for a while or some of these things that are not big ass that we finally got an opportunity to take care of some of the smaller stuff and just have it done as a benefit to the town. I know that like the little league field upgrade has been around forever. And I, you know, I agree. That's a good start. You know, that's a good start. Uh, because, you know, what was the dollar figure on it? I don't that? remember the exact amount on that one, but I'm just saying, you know, it's just yeah. based on the order we put it in for funding will make a big difference in how the council looks at it. Those are decisions that could be made at the, the next level of review with council anyway. Um, you know, if there are certain projects that maybe can do a partial funding, at least they would know what would be the next project on your list that may have been below the cut line, maybe some funding could go to one of those projects so they can make that decision as well. It doesn't have to be this group. Just a quick question. So, so the capital improvements, the, uh, everything in black. What was that number that we reached there, Tom? You said, Derek, do you have that or? Uh, it was. It wasn't just the black. It was also the uh, blue stuff. Um, I remember. No, it was just the black. I was like nine hundred and ninety something thousand. So, so so that number is pretty close to what our budget was for everything for the capital improvement stuff in the black. I mean, I feel this is just me personally. I feel I've gone through this list pretty substantially. For me, I feel it's above me at this point. I, I, I kind of 
put everything in order of how I felt things should have got should be uh, prioritized. And then I just think for capital improvement, we're at our budget, pretty close to our budget for what I feel we need. And then everything else is dependent on how you guys want to distribute, how the council wants to distribute what they feel. I feel my list is, is, is where I'm at at this point. And I don't know about anyone else, what they think they want to move. I know, Bonnie, you felt that, that the, the last couple of things should be higher, but I think they're there because they are in blue. So uh, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. You know, you know what I mean? Yep. The things that we've dealt with through the years are in black. So that's why they might be a little higher. We know that's our budget. So well, plus you're used to all those projects because you've seen them for 20 years. <laughs> exactly. I actually went through and did a list of the stuff in black and priced everything out. And I mean, I had the town, the stuff we normally do, town dam repairs, the golf brook dam, sidewalk ramps, the roof consultant, the roof maintenance. Um, the traffic signs, trying to break it all down, just the black numbers, come up with a number for um, just this capital improvement based on the, and I mean, I cut the library um, renovation by from 100 to 50. I cut out the Solomon Wells parking and with everything else, including the fire department, but I cut that in half, um, I came up with a million. And it would wipe out most of the stuff on our, you know, we, we could get rid of the nature center sidewalk. We could get rid of the softball field upgrade. Um, the Millwoods parking would be gone. The community center parking would be done. The Solemn Well House would be repaired and done. But, you know, it's. I think with the, with the changes in the rule, I mean, I think there's a lot of flexibility now as to what we, what projects are spent with what funding. So, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm looking at it wrong. I don't think you guys have to get too worried about what's in black as yours. You know, there, some of those in black could be funded with, it could be in blue or vice versa because we have a lot of flexibility. So I would just look at the projects themselves if you feel any of the projects themselves, whether they're black, blue or red, you know, fit in somewhere else. And if not, then this is where we are. Right. Well, as Bonnie said, you're just more you're more familiar with those projects. Obviously, you, you know them better. Um, but we really should just try and look at them all on an equal playing field, not worry about how they're going to be funded. I also wanted to mention uh, that just for the group, so they understand, there are also non-capital requests from other departments that are going to be considered when we're divvying up the this. Uh, $7 million. So it's not to say that we can't just fund everything on this page. There are other competing uh, projects, let's put it that way. Yeah, and I think that's precisely why uh, we as committee members were focused on what's in black, uh, because you know those are dollars that once uh, you know allocated, pr provided council, you know, supports those projects um, that hopefully uh, the town would be able to move on. Um, you don't have to consider uh, that you need additional staff to help manage the funding and, and all of that. So, um, so just, you know, taking that into consideration as, as the deputy mayor just said that, you know, there are competing interests, but, um, but if we can take care of some of these items uh, that have been on the list, um, you know, then we feel that we've we've had some uh, success. So I, I think I, I speak for some of my other uh, committee members. Yeah, just to clarify on that, I think um, the spreadsheet I had sent out to you earlier, had some numbers at the bottom with what would be available. Uh, I think those are a little off, uh, mostly because of what uh, Councilor uh, Deputy Mayor Mazzarella said, is that there are there is another list that is roughly about $2.3 million for other projects that are not capital um, that will come out of it. So, you know, looking at what we have for ARPA funds, plus what we have for CIP funds, and backing out those other projects, I think this list 
it's probably around 5.7 as a total between CIP and ARPA, 5.7 million, somewhere in that range. And it depends on what happens with the other projects, if they're fully funded or if some come off the list. So there's still changes that might happen, but that's in general where I think this list is gonna be based on the data we have right now. Yeah, now the fire department, you know, that that's, um, you know, an expensive item. Hopefully if the town, you know, can get the grant um, that would help uh, and, and maybe, you know, Rich um, can look at, um, uh, you know, a graduated plan for, uh, you know, replacing, because uh, that, that is a big nut. Now, if it doesn't get funded uh, by the Prevention Act grant, this would not qualify for, for ARPA funds? Oh, no, it would. It would. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, they, they were saying a little earlier, Christine, before you came on, there is no distinction anymore. The money can basically be spent on anything they want now. Yeah, no, just that it wasn't highlighted <laughs> on the list. So that's why I, I thought, you know, it, uh, it it may not be. But hopefully you get the um, the other grant funds that are specific to, to uh, this equipment. So. Okay, my only, <clears throat> excuse me, my only other question with everyone is, we usually do um, mandates, matching money and safety ahead of everything else. And we've got a few of these projects farther down the list, like the old Academy roof is 24, um, facade improvement program is a matching fund program is 26. Um, We've got them down the list below non-safety mandated or matching items. My only question would be want to move them up on the list or are you everybody okay where they're at? Well, you know, I think we should ask Tom. <clears throat> Tom, are you comfortable with this list? You know, you're on the console. Do you think your console members would be comfortable with this? and we'll be able to move forward. Is there anything else we can do? Yeah, I, I think that we would be comfortable with this. There's a lot of useful information here. Um, when you talk about uh, facade improvement as an example, I know that, that there is money uh, being requested from EDIC that includes facade improvement funds. So they're kind of, <laughs> they've gone in two places for the same, same funding, so they're, they're double dipping because they want two hundred and fifty thousand in total. Right, right. So um, the only thing that uh, was discussed that might be helpful is if um, if we could kind of figure out like which ones could um, like say there's an engineering project that Derek's working on where he maybe needs fifty thousand for you know. Uh, development or engineering drawings or something of that nature to get the program rolling, you know, that would be helpful to know that, you know, if you couldn't get the $400,000, at least 50,000 would, you know, allow him to proceed with the project to some degree. So I don't know how we can do that. Maybe put it in parentheses or something like that, but I mean, when it, reality is when it gets down to it, the council level, we can go to Derek and say, we can't fully fund this item. What, what could you live with to keep it moving forward? Why are you picking on me, Tom? Pardon me? Why are you picking on me? <laughs> I, I know the answer, Derek. <laughs> Give him another person. <laughs> Well, I mean, some, some of these requests were split out that way, you know, the smaller requests were just design. Um, I mean, a lot of my projects, like we do that as well. I mean, for mine, for example, the ones right at the top of the list, you know, they're already like town dam repairs. I'm ready for construction, so I need that to build. Um, looking at the dams, that 25 is for an engineer, sidewalk ramps I need for construction this year. The rest of them are all really consultant, but you know, an example of that would be say miscellaneous drainage for 200,000. 
you know, I had asked for 50 in the CIP. So, you know, if you, if you cut that in half and gave me a hundred, I'll work with whatever I have. And it may make sense to, to take a hundred off of that and, and give it to another project that could use it. So, yeah, we can have those conversations, um, you know, whatever, whatever point they're ready. Um, you know, I have, I have some, you know, probably a couple like that, that I could do. And I'm sure, you know, park and rec or some of the other projects might have some, you know, flexibility. I think Kathy had given you guys the breakdown on um, the basketball and tennis courts in the fields, just so you could see what the costs of each were uh, for that reason, in case you were looking at making any adjustments, whether it be now or at a later date with council. I did have one, um, one comment on the old Academy roof and chimney and cupola. So you have uh, ranking number 24, you have $168,000 and you split out the engineering costs, which ended up at item 38 or ranking 38. And we, we can't do 24 until we do 38. So I don't know if you want to combine those back together or reverse the order or. Yeah, I noticed that earlier myself. And then it, with everything going on, I forgot to mention it. But yeah, um, can't very well do the roof without getting the design done. Right. Um, I mean, I think that's a good example of one of those projects where we would, if we only had 37,000, we'd do all the structural engineering and figure out what we need to do. And then, you know, in a, in another year to actual construction. So. I think swapping the two spots makes sense at this point. It's, it puts the design where it should be and puts, it doesn't mess up the rest of the list. Right. I can bring up the list here so I can make sure I'm following what you're saying. So uh, I was looking at something else there for a minute. Just on this particular project, it will, I think it was initially uh, submitted as one. It looks like Sally had the initial submittal had $75,000 in there for design. Um, part of it was for design, I believe, structural design of the chimney. Some of it was for the roof. So she split out 37, which was specific to the roof. I think the other number still has another 37 or so, which is about half of the 75 for, um, for other engineering work. Um, but yeah, that would make sense I, to be swapping, maybe look at swapping them. So what numbers were they? 24? 24, So we'll have this, the project at 38 and Old Academy Roof Designs here at 24. So anybody else notice any others like that? And uh, Derek, did you want to have a little conversation about the administrating administration costs as a single line item. You mean for ARPA projects, Tom? Well, it's it's ranked at number twenty, right? But there's projects that are with a, um, you know, more towards the top of the list that would require uh, those funds, I believe. Yeah. For example. Um... Some of the HVAC, for example, um, I already told Sally to at least go out and try to get some costs of how much engineering would be for that. So she's working on that right now. But um, yeah, I mean, the, there's no way the staff can handle doing all this, whether it's Derek or Sally or Kathy. We just don't have the in-house capacity. Could you, could you just explain what that, eight, like, what that 800 covers? Is it going out and getting individual engineers for each of the projects? Is it a 
staffing position? Is it? No, they're going to design. It's an outside firm that would do design for um, all these projects and get it ready to go to bid, review the bids. They may even help with overseeing um, construction, kind of like a construction manager kind of thing. Oh uh, yeah, it should probably be moved up the list to, to, before any of the uh, HVAC stuff. Anyway, but, but hang on before we keep moving stuff up. That we know it's close enough to the top already. In my opinion, we know it's going to get funded. It, it, we know it has to get funded. So I think if we move that up to the top of the list, we're degrading the other stuff that we feel is is priority. We we know. In my opinion, if I'm if I'm speaking out of line and I'm wrong with this, that administration thing has to get funded to 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 apply the monies. So we already know that's going to happen. I, I I hate to keep moving that up the list because this stuff the the stuff above it has been on our list for a while. It, that's my opinion. If if I'm if I'm talking crazy, let me know. No, you're not talking crazy at all. I mean, I get what you're saying. I mean, you know, this, this list was done based on everybody's personal opinions and priorities, and um, it makes sense. You know, I mean, like you said, it's going to get funded. We know they need to fund it. How much they're going to fund, it's up to them. They're going to have to figure out how much they need. But you know, we know they're going to do it. So as far as where we put it, I'm comfortable with it. Yeah, plus, Mike, like you said, if you start moving up all the black items, that moves up the other ones considerably, too. So it becomes higher on the list anyways, because you've gotten rid of the black items. Where does the, the sorry, to harp on this, the, the number for the 800 number, how is that derived? Like, is that just a number we took a really good guess at and we, as a placeholder? Uh, it's a percentage of the cost of the bigger projects because they typically say it's anywhere from 10 to 12% of the cost of the project. So it would be, you know, HVAC, some of the bigger ones um, of Derrick's that we just can't do in house. So is there a reason? So anything that's blue could essentially be part of that. Is that correct? Yes. So Old Academy roof design, for example, at 37, is there a reason that that's not put into that 800? Say that again, I'm sorry. The old academy roof design, which is blue on our sheet. Yep. At 37, is there a reason that's not part of the 800 design dollars? It already has money in that line item for those services. Yeah, I think that, that's what Derek was saying, right? That, that, that 820 number was really just a percentage of all the blue items, all the ARPA items, because it's just a, it's a ballpark number, so that's what we use. Uh, yes, that's correct. Any of them that are already for design or for a consultant, we could just back out of that number and not you know take 15% of those projects out. Um, they're usually pretty small, so it would bring it down a little bit. I mean, that would be an option to look at that a little closer. But, but what I guess what I'm saying is, so that money is technically already in the, if it's blue on this sheet and it's marked as design, it's accounted for in that percentage in the 800. Yes, all the blue items, 15% of that cost is in the $820,000 number. So essentially if that line went away, that then that design cost number could go down. Is that what you're saying, Lou? Yeah, I guess, I guess it, goes back to the conversation about where things are falling it's like to me it seems that if if we got a giant pool of money for arpa funds for design and all that stuff and this is a blue item and it's just the design piece of it why is it not in that and then that line item would go away and then that would bump up another thing i guess for me it seems like it's sort of double dipping into we're funding it through ARPA design funds, but we also have its own line for design. But maybe I'm misunderstanding why it's there. For example, all the HVAC money projects do not have a design component to it. I think yeah. Derek was saying some of his does have. Yeah, yeah I think, well, I think what 
Lou is saying is correct. The $37,000 for old Academy roof design, 15% of that is in the $820,000 number. So that wouldn't bring it down. But he's also just saying that $37,000 is a consultant fee. So just take 37 out of the 820. It's one of those projects we don't need to have a consultant for. So yeah, it is. And it was just an estimate. Um, sure. if we looked at it closer, we probably could make that more finite and, and bring that number down um, in those instances. So we could do that. And I guess the other thing you have to always remember too is if money doesn't get spent, it goes back to the council to reallocate for other things. And my only other question, I mean, I'm confident with the way we did the list. I'm, I feel pretty good with it, presenting it the way it is and letting the council do their thing with deciding how to fund everything. The only one I have a question on is the building facilities assessment. Um, Sally seemed to think that that would be a huge help to her moving forward and costing things out and knowing what projects to do when, because that's high enough on the list. I mean, it's something where she said she's never had the money for it, but now that she's got money available, uh, she said the report would be immensely helpful. It would be helpful for you guys and the council too, that's for sure. That's what I'm saying. Is there something we'd want to move up? I mean, you know, it's still up to the council whether they want to fund it or not, but um, it would make our job easier going forward in the future. You know, I'm just trying to understand something here. The projects in blue include the administrative cost, 12, 15%. So if we take the blue projects, okay, Okay, and add up those dollars, wouldn't we be able to reduce the, the, the admin costs of, uh, uh, you know, the ranking 20? Well, can't we reduce that, that, that you, know, you know, that admin cost to be, you know, to reflect that, that the, uh, the other project, you know, the projects already have the admin built in. So instead of $820,000, it might be, I don't know, 700000 <clears throat> I guess we could use your help on that one, Derek. Yeah, that's something you, we could take a closer look at. Yeah, I have to look at all, we have to look at all the projects that are not, that don't include a design component, as Bonnie mentioned, and then have that number reflect. Um, you know, there, there were some examples brought off. I mean, this might be one of them where this is a consultant fee for 100,000. There's the plan of conservation and development for 50,000. That is a consultant fee. There's some design fees. So we could, try and get that number to pare it down to what we think it's going to be more realistic rather than just looking at all the projects and saying 15 percent i mean it's something we, could, we were just putting it in there as a placeholder um but that's something we could break down a little further well that's, yeah, a, we yeah, that's a big number so okay well we want to be careful too that you know it, the funds are not only for design work, but potentially for project management and some other administrative uh, functions. So um, I, I don't know if this committee, you know, should be too involved in, in trying to whittle it down. I think as this moves through the process, council and staff are gonna get a, you know, clearer perspective of, you know, what's needed. And it's also the staging of these projects, right? You can't do all of this at one time. So um, you've got to come up with a timeline to do this work. So, you know, we could next year, we, we could be looking at these admin costs and even some of these other projects. So um, this certainly won't be the final, you know, discussion on all of this. So. But I, I'm just really personally focused on what the town can move forward with, you know, with the budget allocation so we can, um, you know, get some of these things done. We do have some school projects here that, you know, are in red and could potentially be a bond question. Uh, but, you know, um, can the superintendent wait for, you know, some of these items, the, the furniture replacement is number 42 on the list. Um, the, the abatement that needs to be done, 19. Um, 
So, you know, are those items that have to, to be moved up? Um, or, you know, are, are, we, are we good there? Um, just if we could talk about the education projects uh, for, for a moment. What do folks think? Staff, what guidance uh, do you have on, on those projects? The asbestos is 19. Um, furniture replacements, 42. I don't know. I thought that Sally said they still needed to be done because it's going to take 10 years to even um, get everything, you know, even if the bond passed, it would take 10 years to be able to get all of this done. And there, these things could be needed now. And meanwhile, especially the furniture, you'd move it into the new buildings. But um, I, I would have to defer over to Mike Emmett. Yeah, I mean, but it, it, I guess regardless of where the committee has the items on the list, um, the council could decide to, to, to move those up. But, you know, just because we're going through this process now, um, I don't, Tom, are, are there items here that you would suggest get moved up because, um, you know, it, it's symbolic. It, it, you know, tells council that, you know, these are items that you, definitely uh you know need to look at these yeah the, the uh the roof the two roofs item three and six i think those are in a good place those need to be done uh, there's no way we could wait 10 years for that um the asbestos carpeting that's already been put off i think if i'm not mistaken they had that as a project and then they ended up using the money to uh, do some other emergency uh, work. And then the furniture is just an ongoing, uh, they're looking at 50,000 every year. So yep. you know, that could be put up towards the top. So, I mean. So do you think the asbestos at 19 is it you know it's in the top 20 is that good or do you think that needs to move up i think that's going to make the cut regardless of what happens at, at number 19 so okay and then the, the furniture furniture is uh like i said the furniture is a, it's an ongoing you know i think she said they could do one or two classrooms for fifty thousand. Think it was Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So is that okay at 42, or do you think that needs to go up? I would probably push it up a little bit, maybe more towards middle of the middle of the pack, like where the where the asbestos is or halfway. Yeah. If I could just add, just ask a random question. So while I know that we're saying to push it up, I also it should be noted that one, two, three, four of us have it at 30 or below. So I don't know, I don't know if that factors into that thought process either. But. Not only that, that wasn't that a new item this year? That's been on the list in the past. Okay, yeah. that was a new item. I guess I just say that sort of to Mike's point of, you know, if we start moving everything around the list, I mean, there was somewhat of a consensus of where it landed. I think a, a point or two either way is some, is was the majority, but yeah. What we do at this point is we refine the list and we have discussion. We seek the input of the staff and the council uh, representative, the deputy mayor in this case, to give us guidance on, on any items that uh, we may be, you know, overlooking or that may be priority. And, um, you know, by, by moving them up that, uh, you know, signals council, um, you know, that, that these are items to uh, really consider. 
Um, if the committee does not want to move the furniture, that's fine. I think the deputy mayor has had enough uh, feedback from us, um, you know, to um, to be able to speak to to the item. So, uh, but I always ask about education and. Joe, you and I, we served on the Board of Ed together many years ago, so uh, I, I know you uh, look at the educational items as well. As somebody who recently served on the Board of Ed, I can assure you that I also look at Board of Ed items, so. Okay. Me personally, I'm going with the list the way we have it. Um, you know, we've made our recommendations. Council can get more information on certain things that they're interested in. What portion they can get started with or whatnot. We've never had a 50 item list before. And for us to try and break it down without knowing what other projects are out there or other committees are working on, I think this is giving them a good place to start from us. Yeah. I would agree with that. Like I said, there's a wealth of information there. So everybody put their, uh, you know, their rankings in there and not to say that things won't get shifted around at the end of the day, but at least we have a general consensus of what the most important things are. Mike, do you want to make that as a motion maybe? Uh, sure, I'd like to make a motion to accept our rankings at, uh, with the exception, I mean, with those two things that we moved today, yes, I would like to make a motion to accept the, uh, the rankings of the budget of the line items. We have a second. A second. So moved. Okay. So, um, if, if for some reason the council wanted to give us a smaller list and ask us to rank a smaller list, do they? wanted our input again later um i personally be more than willing to do it again but for right now i think we're good with what we have here can i just ask a process question since i haven't been here a while um whether it's derek or someone so now this goes to council and then planning and zoning or the other way around usually the other way around um okay. we go we go to planning and zoning with the recommendations do a presentation there and then it goes to council okay Thanks, Derek. And then next year we look at it and we see what they took out, what they didn't, and where they put this and where they did that. And we say, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, but they might have leftover money to give back to you too. So who knows? Nice. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. Yeah, I don't see that one happening. We gave them we gave them a list with 50 items. They only did the top three. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, do we have any old business? No, we don't. Okay. Um, I don't think we're, well, we've completed our list, we've completed our recommendations, so I don't think we're gonna need a next meeting. So um, can I get a motion? Well, before I do, we're gonna move on to um, the paving committee meeting next. Yeah, we could close out this meeting and then okay. have a discussion. All right, so I, can I get a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Thank you for all your hard work, gang. It was nice to meet some of you. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie. Okay, and then um, I guess I'll turn things over to you, Derek, so we can start the paving. Yeah, does everybody have uh, 15 or 20 minutes to hold the next? Paving Advisory Committee meeting? I'm good. Okay, I'll, I'll try and make it quick. So uh, some of you have heard this before, been through this with me before, um, but, but some of the new members, uh, like I mentioned in my email, um, this committee also serves as the Paving Advisory Committee. Um, so with that, typically um, what we do every five years, we have all our roads evaluated by a consultant. They, they give us rankings or we're called pavement condition indices for each one of the roads. Um, and then we use that to develop a five-year paving program. Um, we do it that far out in advance because mostly because we need to coordinate with the utility companies um, in an effort to try and get them into the roads that we wanna pave to do their utility work ahead of time. 
right now we're at the end of our initial program, which was initially a five-year program. We're actually in year six right now. We'll, currently we're having our consultant um, reevaluate the road so we can get a fresh set of data. Um, it's been five years since it was last done and we'll be developing a new program. Um, so usually what I do is that when we develop the first program, I'll, I'll come to you probably next year and we'll, we'll talk about the big program that we're, we're gonna go forward with or looking to go forward with. Um, and then on a yearly basis, I usually come back to you and say, this is what we're thinking about doing for spring and fall. Um, it's really to give you as residents an opportunity to have some feedback as to what roads we're going to be doing. Um, there is a lot that goes into deciding how the roads are done. Um, we do have software. Um, we're actually buying some new software this year that will help us uh, identify the most cost efficient roads to do um, at, at the right time to do them. Um, obviously, you know, roads degrade over time. So waiting until the end uh, of its useful life to reconstruct it is far more expensive than performing some maintenance operations like we do crack sealing, we do patch repairs in different areas. Um, we do uh, milling and overlay if we can get to it before it gets deteriorated too much. So we have software that we take into consideration. We have uh, geographic location, um, traffic volumes, um, resident complaints that we get over the years. There's a whole bunch of factors that goes into it. So for tonight, I was here just basically give you an overview of what we're looking at for the spring and fall program this year. Um, see if you have any concerns and if you're okay with me moving forward with it just for the benefit of the new members um, who may not be as familiar with this, I'm just gonna run through a brief presentation I've done uh, a couple of times before, just talking about what this program is, what we're looking at um, with, uh, with our, our recommendations that we make. So let me just pull up a screen here. Can everyone see the pavement management slides? Yep. Okay. So in general, what we're looking at here with this particular uh, graph is just the, the, the useful life of, of a road. So, you know, on the bottom is time. So when the road starts, obviously in excellent condition, um, it starts dropping off as shown in the, in the curves and then it gets to a poor position. So what, we, what we, this is showing is if you can pick up that road when it's 75% way through its good life, cost you, or this, these numbers are a few years old, but this is, you know, $1.66 a square yard to renovate the road here. As you continue down the last, the next 12%, you get another 40% drop. And when you get down here, you're looking at paying 22 to $25 a square yard to reconstruct that road. So we do have a lot of roads down here. Uh, we do have a lot of roads that are approaching this level. So we try to generally mix up our programs. Um, every year we spend about $100,000 in crack seal maintenance. Um, that's been what we've been doing to try and preserve the roads as long as we can. Usually our, our paving programs are a combination of mill and overlay, where we just mill off um, the top levels of the, of the pavement, leave the bottom levels, and then resurface the road. Um, when we get into roads that are in worse conditions, we do what's uh, called reclamation. <clears throat> it's machines that come through and grind all the existing pavement into the base material, break it all up, and then we basically create a new road base out of that and then put all the pavement structure back, which is a more involved process. It requires us to replace all the curbing bituminous curbing that we have out there, all the paved aprons. Um, so that tends to get a lot more expensive than if we can do it as a mill and overlay. So it really depends on where the road is in its design life. Just as a reference to give you an idea, when we talk about these PCI ratings, it's on a scale of uh, one to a hundred. So hundred being brand new road, freshly paved. And as it goes down in, in number is just more deterioration of the road. So this is an example of a picture of a road that's a 100 because it had just been paved and when they go through and do their evaluations this year, this is what they're looking at. They're rating all the roads with a PCI. So we get a good sense of where our roads are, how many, how much is in good condition, how much is in poor condition. So this is an example of a lower PCI where we're in the, mid, in the high 80s. With this, we'd be looking at um, just doing some crack sealing, some patching. You can see it's in good shape. There's a few cracks forming. So we'll go out, have a contractor come through, put um, sealant material in there, which helps keep the water out of the cracks water getting underneath the pavement into the base is what causes a lot of the heaving freeze thaw cycles and it really causes the road to deteriorate a lot faster. So this is a, this is in a place where we do maintenance like a crack seal. <clears throat> this shows a PCI 75. So here we're getting into um, a little bit more cracking. It still could be a crack seal. It could be a patch. Um, there's processes of doing a thin overlay um, that would uh, give you a new surface. Um, but not be as extensive as a, as a full mill and overlay like we typically would do. 
And then you can see now we're getting down to a 57. So here we're getting a lot of cracking. Um, the road, the road surface itself is not in good shape. So here we could be looking at a mill and overlay, um, maybe with some patching, with some crack sealing. Um, there's a variety of things we can do. Um, but at this point, we're generally doing a mill and overlay. So we'll take off two inches of pavement, put two inches of pavement back. Generally taking off those two, two and a half inches of pavement will address all the cracking that's there. Um, when we do these projects, if we find worse conditions underneath that, we'll usually do patch repairs in certain areas and then repave. This is showing our road now down below 50, 46. Um, unfortunately, we have, uh, you know, we have roads that in town that, are, that have gotten this bad. This is where we've gotten to the point where we're looking at a full reclamation project. Um, generally, that's acceptable. Um, we do do uh, borings ahead of time to look at subsurface conditions. If we have a situation where we don't have good base material, we have clay, we have sand, um, then we might need to look at a full depth reconstruction, which would be boxing out the roads. So we dig out the pavement, we dig out some of the base material. We may have to put a geo grid down or some kind of stabilization if it's on clay. And then we put process aggregate back and then we repave. Um, so at this point, that's what we're looking at with some of these roads they are at that level. Most of the time we can get away with just doing a reclamation, which is cheaper than the full reconstruction, um, but it already depends on the data we get back from our borings that we, that we usually do um, in advance six to, six to nine months ahead of the program. So back in 2016, this is just kind of a summary of where we were. We have about 105 miles of roads in town that are local roads. Um, this excludes state roads because the state's responsible for those. <clears throat> At the time, uh, about a quarter of them, 20, 24.8, were, were fine. Um, we had another quarter that was about uh, needing routine maintenance. 22% um, at preventative maintenance, like the like crack sealing, um, thin overlays. And then about 26 for full structural improvement, and then another 5.6 for base rehab. So that means those bottom two constitute about 30% of the rows. Those were in pretty significantly poor condition, as you can see with the dollar values on the right column. Obviously, when we get to that level, costs are much higher. Um, so at that time, we were estimating we had about $14 million of improvements that needed to be done if they were all to be done at that one time. Um, you know, it doesn't work like that. We don't have that kind of money. So we kind of go after these roads in a way that, um, like I said, tries to extend their life and try to catch them at the, at the most economical place um, to re rehab them. Um, historically, there had been some gaps in time where the town didn't do a lot of roads. And unfortunately, that um, put us behind the curve a little bit. We've been playing catch up, trying to get to some of these roads that have been really bad and try and get them back into shape. So I'd be curious to see how this next assessment comes out in the next few months as far as where, you know, where we are, where our PCI rating as a town is, um, and see what kind of improvements we've been able to make the last few years. So I had sent you uh, this list. Um, so what, what I'm showing here is our, 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 our two programs up here, the spring and the fall. Um, these are roads that are shown in blue because when we originally developed the program five, well, six years ago now, they weren't in the list. Um, as I said, we were in year six. We've extended it a year. Um, that way we can get our data uh, up, update done now and then plan for 2023 and going forward. Um, so this particular neighborhood is uh, Davis Road. Butler Street is south of Route 3. Um, I would point out over here with the, the PCI ratings that these roads have, they were down in the 40s and 50s. Um, so we're looking at a, a road reclamation project out here. Um, we have some roads that are better than others, but generally they're, they're all in poor enough condition and we're gonna have that equipment on site. So we're gonna do a full reclamation. These roads have a lot of potholes, a lot of cracks. We've been getting a lot of complaints. Um, what we have in this column here just shows the estimated cost. Um, we're looking at about $700,000 program. Comments just talks about why we're doing the road. Um, a lot of these are from the complaint list. Some of them are, if we're in the area, even if we haven't gotten complaints, um, the roads are you know, maybe a little bit better, but not great. So we might as well do them while we're there. Um, we do pay, when we have a contractor on board, if we have to, have to move a certain distance, it's, there's added costs. So we do try and geographically group our, our programs as much as we can. So um, with this, as you can see, a lot of the roads here, as far as age, a lot of them are over 30 years old. Um, you know, usually the design life of a brand new reconstructed road is 20 years. Um, a road that's been milled and overlaid is, is 15. And as you can see, we have roads that are approaching 40 years old since the last time they were rehabbed. So we're, we're still doing some of that catch up I had talked about. 
for the fall program, um, that's still a little bit in flux. Uh, what I'm showing here is an area around Broad Street Green. Um, as you can see, the, the, the roads that are in black were on our original list. Um, we've added some additional roads in the neighborhood there um, for this year was what we're looking to do. Uh, some of them are from the complaint list. <clears throat> some of them are just because they're in the area. Um, one thing the town has been trying to do in recent years is um, for a period of time, some of the cul-de-sacs were, were passed over, uh, mostly because they're small, they don't get a lot of traffic, not a lot of people complain. Um, but what the town's been doing in recent years is trying to allocate out of the usually 1.2 to 1.5 million we have to spend on this program, at least um, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year just to do um, cul-de-sacs. So in this list, there are, there are a few cul-de-sacs that um, we, we could be doing. Um, what I'm showing is here, uh, we're looking at about $400,000 this year in cul-de-sacs. If, if it, we do all the roads that we're looking at, what I have over in this part is what we've been spending on cul-de-sacs the last few years from 2017. Um, last year, we just happened not to have any, um, but averaging that out over the five-year program, we've, we're averaging just over $200,000 a year, which is what the target is. Um, to make sure those roads do get incorporated into the programs. Um, I think I'll be, I'm just going to pull up the let me pull up the plan, um, which also kind of helps show you know why we're doing what we're doing. Um, here's the spring program. The roads that are shown in black are those roads that have been paved between 2020 um, and 2000 and 2020 over that 20 year period. Um, I, I don't think we've updated it yet for the 21 roads, but as you can see here, the roads that are highlighted in orange is what we're looking to do. They're in a neighborhood where we've, we've done work in the past recently. It would be nice to kind of finish out that neighborhood and get these roads um, up to par with the rest of them that are in the area. This is what we're looking at for fall of 2022. Uh, this is the Broad Street Green down here. <clears throat> As you can see, we've done a lot of the roads in this neighborhood recently. Um, we have gotten a lot of complaints about the green. Obviously we have a town events there. Um, it is in poor condition. So we're looking at going basically all around the green with Broad Street. Um, there are some other roads here that uh, I, would, I would like to do while we're there um, for two reasons. One, we're, we're already mobilized there, so it's, it's more cost effective. And secondly, you know, we have some roads down here that, can, that are not on the main drag, but really could use it. And they will be, since everything else will be done, there'll be one-offs that we'll have to go back and try and get at a later date. Um, so if funding allows, I'm going to try and add some of these other roads in. That's why in the list, there's a note saying, you know, we'll be included if, if funding is available. That's kind of what happened up here with North Brick um, up off of uh, State Street. As you can see, we've, we've paved all the roads around it and we just didn't get to North Brick. So now it's kind of isolated out there as a poor road in a, in a neighborhood that's been redone. So I'm trying to avoid that here. Um, these, this program is paid with um, the local road funds. So everyone pays a percentage of their taxes goes into this specific for road improvements. Um, so we, it's constantly uh, being spent and replenished. Every, every January and July, we get an influx of funds. Um, so I'll do an evaluation with finance once we finish our spring program and determine if we can um, afford to be able to do you know, everything I wanna do in this fall program. You can see it's, a, it's pretty aggressive. It's about $900,000, which is a total of 1.6 for the year. We're usually targeting, like I said, 1.2. 1.5. These numbers are usually a little conservative. So if I can do it, I'd like to squeeze it in. Uh, if not, some of these roads might on, on fall might just come off the list and we'll try and pick them up in one of our future programs. <clears throat> That's kind of a, just an overview of what we do. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, I would like to come back to the group next year when I have all the data and really show you the data and maybe get some more feedback from you. Um, at this point, I would ask, we're kind of, like I said, at the end of the program, we've added these roads in in the last couple of years just to get us to the next five-year program. So if everyone's comfortable with it, um, I, my request is to go ahead and, and move forward. Um, but certainly if you guys have some questions or um, want to understand things better or any concerns with anything we're showing, just you know, please let me know. I just got one question, Derek, not about your plan. I mean, it's great. I like knocking off all them streets, stay in the same area. Um, can you apply for anything from the, can you get any money from the Infrastructure uh, Act, Investment Act? Yeah, um, there's, there's going to be a lot of money uh, flowing into Connecticut for uh, transportation projects. 
Um, I think that was one of the uh, items on the list, which was allocating, I think we had a $250,000 request in there to have town match available. Um, our understanding is that funding is gonna come in through existing programs. So programs like LOTSIP that we've used in the past for road reconstruction will get money, um, community connectivity grant programs. So that money's gonna come into each program. Each program's a little different as far as what the match is. Um, which is why Bonnie had that as one of their one of the CIP ARPA projects, so we could have some money available. Um, but we are going to be looking at that uh, going forward. I I did point out to you guys that were on the committee last year. We we do have Wolka Hill Road up here that's going to be reconstructed this year. It was originally expected for last year. However, um, we had some delays as far as the design had to change. We had we have very poor soil conditions below the road, so. We're at the final design stage now. Um, it's with it's going through its final reviews at the uh, at the Krog and state level. Um, so this is something where we've got lots of funding to do this, a state funded project. Town paid for design, and we got um, we have about three point three million dollars in lots of funds for this. We also got another half a million dollars to do street lighting in a um, in the state bond funds. So it's about three point eight million dollar project. So that's. That's an example of one project that we, we have gotten funding for. Um, we've also gotten lots of funding to do um, sidewalk extensions down here along Marsh Street and Great Meadow Road to connect to the um, Putnam Bridge Trail that DOT will be constructing this year. I don't know if you had heard that, but they're gonna be building a trail connection from the bridge down to Great Meadow Road with a parking lot underneath the bridge and on the Weathersfield side. They're also doing uh, the same thing on the Glastonbury side, which is a much longer run um, beyond the bridge to get down to Norbuck Avenue in that area. So as part of that connection, regional connection, we, we do have $700,000 in funds now to do some sidewalk work for phase one. We just put an application for another 1.1 million to do phase two out here. And then after that, um, we'll be looking at doing road work. So we do usually go after whatever funding's available. And I think with the transportation funds coming in, there's going to be a lot of opportunity. So we're already starting to, you know, lay out some projects and some thoughts on what we, what we can go forward with. Um, you know, for me, honestly, the reality is we've been understaffed for the last couple of years and we are um, way behind the eight ball. So I've got a lot of projects and money. I've got to get spent soon. Um, but I think we're going to do our best to go out there and get the funds in place and then, you know, do our best to figure out how to get, how to get them done. And some of that $250,000 request was for a match or, or for consulting services if we need it. Well, I know the program's been working. It's been working well. Um, the quality of the roads overall in town has improved since the program has been in place. So, I mean... The recommendations have been good. Uh, I'm good with what you guys are recommending. Okay, appreciate that. Anybody else have questions? Joe, you're muted. Uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> you know, other states and towns uh, are using uh, stone paving, and. Uh, and what they do is, is, is you, know, you know, they take off the top layer of the hard top, they lay down the stone and they're sealed. And they say that it's, 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 it's very cost effective and it's good for the environment. So has this ever been discussed uh, uh, in, 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 you know, in Connecticut uh, or, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, have you, have you heard about this, Derek? Uh, yes, there are different uh, treatment uh, applications like that. Um, there's, there's chip seal, there's fog seal. Um, uh, chip seal is one that I know has been used in the area. I had been out to Rocky Hill. They did, uh, they did one rural road with it. Um, the results were kind of mixed from the town engineer. The issue we have here in town is we are you know, so highly developed. We don't, those types of applications are best for rural uh, country roads, which we have <laughs> very few of, if any. Um, and I think in the past, the town has tried some of those, uh, some of those treatments that maybe wasn't well received. So we're, you know, we, we, we try to stick with mostly paved, um, although with this latest round of um, evaluations that are being done now, those types of treatment methods are going to be discussed with the consultant to see if there's anything else we could be incorporating into our programs that are more cost effective or environmentally friendly um, that produce the same results. So we're 
we're going to have that discussion with them in the next few months about other options besides what we've been doing. Um, but that particular one, yeah, we've considered in the past and just opted not to not to use it. Well, we have a property. My wife have a property in Narragansett, Rhode Island, and the town has uh, uh, you know has gone to that you know the alternate uh, paving. And uh, uh, the only the only complaint I have is when I walk on the road, it, it uh, it's not as obviously it's not as smooth as a as a hard top, but but it, it holds up real well and it drains well. So I think it's something that uh, you know you should you know consider look at because uh, you know uh, you know the town is not using it on on the on, on their, their their heavy roads, but in developments, okay, uh, you know they're using it. So it's something to you know check into and, and see if there could be because you know it costs a lot of money to do paving. So. Yep. No, I I agree with you. We will. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Well, I appreciate everyone's time. Um, so what I'll do, what I what I'll do for CIAC is just finish up the minutes. I'll, I'll email them to you guys if you could just reply with comments or or an approval for that. That would be great. Um, I usually do the same thing for this meeting. I'll just summarize what we discussed and, and send you an email. Um, otherwise, we really sh shouldn't have a need to regroup unless uh, unless we're unless you're asked to do some more prioritizing or look at the list again. Um, and other than that, we usually will reconvene again next January. So thank you everyone for your participation. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, have a good year. Stay safe and well, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye-bye.